Baton Kato's Eternal Wings and the Lost Ocean is one of the most interesting games I've ever played. It is for the GameCube system, one of my favorite consoles. It is a turn-based RPG with elements of a card game, a deck building system. In the world of Baton Kato's, the essence of objects can be stored in cards. Along with your party members, you use these cards for combat, selecting which cards you would like in your deck, and then you draw a hand and use them in the sequence that you would like. Depending on the character you are playing as and their level, you can use just a couple of cards per turn or more. The cards also contain numbers on them, and there is a bit of a poker element where if you play a straight series of numbers in the right order or a combo of duplicate numbers, you get bonus points. Very interesting combat system. The card essence system also plays a role in the side quests of the game, where you are required to store the essence of objects into cards and then bring them to the correct location or person to complete the side quest. But, interestingly, the essences change over time, which gives you a time limit for your side quests. For example, maybe you need to bring fire to a baker or someone who needs the flames. If you wait too long, the fire will extinguish and you will only have the essence of smoke. This time-based system also plays a role in combat. You might have the essence of bananas that you've been using in your deck as healing items. However, over time they rot, become poison bananas that can now be used as an attack, dealing low damage. Another interesting factor of baiting Katos is your relationship to the party. Unlike other games where you play directly as a character or you are simply unreferenced, in Baton Kato's you are a guardian spirit following around the main protagonist. They refer to you directly by name and reference you as part of the plot. You being inserted into the plot directly is kind of like the early Fire Emblems where you play as a tactician as opposed to a member of the party themselves. There is a twist two-thirds through the game, which I will not spoil, but it involves the relationship between you as a guardian spirit and the party. Another interesting element is the camera feature, a Pokemon Snap minigame, the way to acquire funds to buy new cards and equipment in this game is by taking pictures of the enemies that you face and selling them. The bosses specifically can be sold for a high price and you only have one chance to take a good picture of them during combat. Balancing this with not losing the combat encounter adds an extra challenge layer to the game. There are a variety of characters who join your party throughout the course of the game and you have some agency to choose which ones you would like to be in your combat party and what you would like their decks to specialize in as you adventure through their various subplots. Finally, the visuals in Baiting Katos are very interesting. They utilize 2D backgrounds to create a variety of beautiful scenery that you traverse through. The animation of the game itself is high quality, and although the 3D can clash with the 2D, I think they get away with it, creating environments that are unique and different from one another, and quite memorable. Overall, this is an excellent game with good plot, visuals, and combat system, and I highly recommend picking it up. Thanks.